kind of main objectives, right, were to bring all these different instruments and approaches together, mm -hmm. quantify in as many different kind of dynamical regimes as possible mm -hmm. what the mixing looks like mm -hmm. in the ocean between the Indian Ocean waters and mm -hmm. the Atlantic. Mm -hmm. We can use kind of this eddy flux framework to kind of use that those measures of diffusivity to estimate just how much water mm -hmm. is kind of leaking from the Atlantic. So here we're looking at, you know, with the package that went over the side, this is real-time feed data from the instrument. And you can see we're down at about 3,200 feet. The depth is given there. But it's a lot of energy that the ocean is moving for us away from the tropics towards the poles uh, for free, you know, each and every day. How does the agolus come into that? So the agolus is feeding up back into the Gulf Stream and the effect of those waters leaking from the agolus uh, on the sinking of waters in the North and North Atlantic is, we think, substantial. So we can run models that show that this leakage, if it changes, can change the strength of the heat transport in the Atlantic. So it can change the amount of heat that's going up into the North Atlantic and Arctic oceans. And that's huge because it's going to affect ice, it's going to affect temperatures across North America and Europe, um, and in fact it affects climate globally um, with all kinds of teleconnections through both the ocean and the, and the atmosphere. This cruise is um, something is basically kind of between the cracks. Maybe we should have called, maybe we should have called it between the cracks instead of quiche. But um, you know, we're basically kind of focusing on what's in and between the eddies rather than what's in the eddies. But you can see that while we have an eddy here, an eddy here, an eddy here, you can see that the ocean is pulled around into kind of rivers and streams and filaments and these eddies are basically kind of uh, drawing out this Indian Ocean water around them and between them into these filaments that get thinner and thinner and thinner and then uh, eventually they get so thin that diffusion dissipates them all together and the system becomes well mixed. We are waiting for the bridge to say OK go. When the bridge says OK go, we will get our instrument picked up, lowered over the side, and we'll start doing profiling for turbulence. So that gives us a measurement that allows us to be able to quantify how much mixing is going on within the water, you know, the kind of vertical mixing between water masses. So they let the probe like free fall down to about a thousand meters in the water column, and then they pull it back up and they do the whole thing again. So they'll be doing that for 20 hours continuously because in the ocean we have these things called inertial cycles and they're driven by the rotation of the earth. Um, and they mean that kind of mixing kind of happens in bursts at particular times in this inertial cycle. It was the first uh, launch of drifters for this cruise. We launched like 48, uh, within like what, four hours, six hours? The idea was to create uh, a drifting instrument that would uh, track the current. There's actually not a regular buoy, but uh, more like a donut shape, so that you spread the buoyancy very low to the water, so you reduce the influence of the wind. The idea of this drifter is that it's so small and low cost that you can deploy large numbers, and you get a sort of a, a, a nice coverage of an area. Part of our exercise is to measure how fast things that are starting together how fast do they go apart? And that gives us a measure of the mixing rate uh, in the area. This guy is designed to profile. So we can drive the ship along and we can make it profile and it gets very high resolution cycles through the ocean. And with those cycles, you get like a really nice sort of plot, so to speak, uh, you know, a very high resolution version of everything that's happening at depth sort of a lot easier than you could do with that. Um, so really it's about the sort of resolution of the cycles and how deep you can do them.
We'll be on station at 0800. Take off one engine. At that time right now you're on one and three. We're at 640. Base course 333. Just kind of coming in. Um, they're going to put out the wire flyer, so head into the sea and swell for the deployment and then turn around and looks like another trough course. One of the, the most expensive things on the ship is fuel. So whenever we don't need the two engines, so two engines that gives us 12 knots through the water. So when we're steaming between stations, we try to go as fast as possible, economically, you know, sustainable. And then when we get on station, we go down to one, which cuts our fuel consumption in half. Every day we meet up as a PI group so that we can look at what the ocean conditions are on this day. So we use a lot of satellite data, including sea surface temperature, sea surface height, which tells us something about the way the ocean is moving. We can also use some of the information that we now have put in the water. So for instance, GI is tracking the 48 drifters we already deployed. And uh, we can look at um, some of the wire flyer information and so on. So we try to look at this information and figure out what's going on in the ocean and where we want to measure next. The blue colors are ba basically the Benguela upwelling. So we've got an upwelling of cold waters from below. And then we've got these warm Indian Ocean waters coming in and mixing with some Atlantic waters. And, you know, so we, we can see that there's a front here. All right, so we definitely don't want to change where we're going, right? That's still a pretty good, I think it's good. Yeah. place. I think it's good. And remember, we're up here for the weather. In a way, I think we should look at the weather quickly and then yeah. before we think of timing. Yeah, so one of the reasons we came north, right, so is, is because of this guy here, this system here. And we don't want anything to do with that because we can't continue our work. So, so we decided to come further north in this Agulhas Leakage Corridor. The Kongsberg Dynamic Positioning System is what we use here, DPOS-1. It's driving all the thrusters right now, both stern thrusters and our bow thruster. Um, I've put in the heading and then I have the joystick. So right now the joystick is pushed over to the left, so it's kind of making the ship go to the left. And then I have it pushed a little bit ahead too, so it's kind of crabbing to the left and forward. Um, that's one of the ways that you can use the system. But you can also just say, hold me right here on this position. And then you can move a little cursor on the screen and it will drive around in that, wherever you move it on the screen, which is pretty cool. Having women in oceanography is so important because um, for so many years, it's been a male dominated field. When I started, I mean, it wasn't uncommon to be the only woman on a ship. And yeah, I'd say to be quite honest, it's pretty traumatizing. It's pretty unpleasant. I mean, you get a lot of focus on you and your abilities. You know, people are constantly asking you to prove yourself over, you know, the men. So it's really tiring and you feel really isolated. But I've also had some great experiences and particularly once I got into a position of being able to, you know, bring in more women into science, it's just brought me more and more joy. Women are so great to work with, they're so insightful, they're so collaborative, and it just is a totally different feeling out here. So is there cold to come together and united so stead, let us live this life. This is called a sea pies. It's a current and pressure recorded inverted echo sounder. So it measures bottom current. That's uh, measured 50 meters above the seafloor. So the instrument will sink and stay at the seafloor. And then I'll have a 50 meter cable. That's this black cable that you see. And I'll have a current meter. Inside the instrument, it measures pressure. So it's measuring bottom pressure. 
And so with the sea pies next to the tall mooring, we'll be able to measure very accurately sea surface height and those two components. You know, like how tight are the molecules together? Is it really tight together and is the sea surface height small or are they really far apart and moving around and hot and there's a lot of sea surface height? And then we'll be able to measure mass. So that's what we're doing. We are going to deploy a glider, uh, in this case it's the Sea Explorer glider, there are different brands. Mm -hmm. uh, this one is equipped with very, very special sensors. We have a microstructure sensor that's going to give us turbulence, which is very, very small motions and instabilities in the ocean that generate mixing of different properties. Uh, we also have the other sensors, such as the CTD, so we are going to measure salinity, temperature and oxygen. Uh, of, in the ocean. And another very special sensor we have in this glider is an ADCP, which is going to measure currents, the speed of the, of the ocean, of the different layers of the ocean. Even more as I get older, that becomes one of the essential ingredients for me about doing the science, is having along the best people um, and when I say best, I mean not only the excellence in terms of the science, but also the excellence in terms of uh, wanting to teach and wanting to open the science and the understanding of the ocean up for everybody. And wanting to see that there's a role for everybody in that. I think it was amazing the way a lot of people pulled together and just made it work. You know, the, the ship and the wire flower guys were like, okay, we're gonna figure out how to deploy something off the side of the ship and you know instead of thinking about what we can't do they were all thinking about what we could do. Two people can be kind of walking around once it gets here and once the wire gets tight and it's sort of under control then we'll drag the card out of the way. I also think it's an incredible team you know we're we're like from four institutions or so yeah, Miami, so four. URI, plus the South African institutions. The, yeah so Cape Town, uh, Gothenburg, Rhode Island, Miami, and, Bangor. and Wales. Yeah, so we're five institutions. And yeah, I think the students were saying before that they've made lifelong friends. It's going to take us a long time to understand this data, right? Because we've collected a lot of data. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did. And a lot of different, like using a lot of instruments that even you and I, after 25 years, have never used before. Mm -hmm. And ways in which we'd not seen the ocean before, which mm -hmm. is exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, Aiming for recovering of uh, one of the gliders, the Sea Explorer, and it's uh, right over there. That was the sun. In a way this is like the end of the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then we've got kind of the rest of many years to come of kind of figuring out what this data is about. I think one thing is that what happens, right, is that we all go home and we, and we process our data, right? So when you start processing your data, you fall in love with it. Right. And it tells you a story. Uh, we're about to launch a uh, wave glider. And this one's adapted to measuring uh, CO2, how much CO2 is going between the atmosphere and the ocean, or the ocean and the atmosphere. And uh, we're going to deploy this uh, wave glider, and we hope to recover it way after the voyage, maybe in uh, two, three months, if everything goes well, maybe four months. And the wave glider is going to sail all the way back to Cape Town on its own, and then we're going to recover it there with a small boat. Release. Okay. The biggest instruments we have are these acoustic Doppler current profilers which have these la four large transducer heads and they profile through the water column measuring Doppler shift which actually gives you velocity. So these guys are very clever, they have no moving parts, they basically just use the acoustics and they can also profile the water column so we get a measure of the current not just where the instrument is but for f about 500 meters above the instrument. It'll profile through the water column and give us a velocity every 20 meters or so. 
And I feel like this beginning part is all that super steep climb that you take, you know, on the on the roller coaster, uh -huh. like before you go down. And sometimes it stops in the middle and you're like, oh no, <laughs> am I going backwards or forwards? But then it keeps going. But that's like a really hard time, right? That's the hard part, right? right. And I feel like now we're kind of right at that tip. And there's gonna be like a lot of fun stuff happening. There's still gonna be some of those mini ups and downs, but yeah. it's mostly gonna just be like, I think a really fun ride.